got a feeling I'm about to get put on I got a feeling That something finna take off I got a feeling And it won't be too much longer Got a feeling Coming up on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty, the real hip hop music. I'm back here with my brother Tuck, and uh, man, there's so much going on in the world. But before we get started, how are you doing today, my brother? Hey, man, you know, supreme and grand rising, you know, to all the listeners, everybody out there, man, I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic, man. You know, the universe is taking care of me. I'm putting in the energy and it's giving me the love back, man. What can I say? Sounds good, man. How about yourself, I mean, my brother? How you holding up in this in this matrix? Uh, I'm holding up all right, man. Um uh, I, I just uh I'm paying attention to what's going on right now and you know, one thing that just constantly standing out in my mind is is what's not being spoken on. Um, it's a lot of things that I guess dominate our news feeds or our daily conversations, but there's a lot of things that's not being said. And we was just having a conversation about the topic of industry plans. And I believe a, a lot of people are becoming more aware of this epidemic because it's pretty evident. You have artists, be they male or female, who really don't possess musical abilities or talent, yet they are pedestalized, they are promoted, they are publicized, they are talked about as if they are great, and they haven't done anything great. And the bigger part of the equation is they are placed in those positions to control the masses. And now, if you look at a certain artist and their following, you might be led to believe that, yeah, this is true because look at how many followers this certain individual has. <laughs> and we all know that this music is not good. You know what I'm saying? We, we all know that this music is not good yet. You know, people are following. And, and I, I say to myself every day, like, this is a problem. You know, this is an issue. And, um, as part of the reason why I still create and put out music myself, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's not enough that I have to talk about or pinpoint the problems that may exist in hip hop, but I'm also a contributor to hip hop. So I'm going to contribute and put good music out there to give you an example of what real music should sound like. But I want to ask you, how do you feel about it? the industry plans? Man, well, for me personally, and I'm sure uh, for a lot of other artists and stuff like that, uh, you take it kind of personal. Uh, you know, me, I know I look at, you know, a lot of, uh, I look at different artists' success, right? And you have to fall back and say, man, am I being a hater? Am I being a hater? Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Is this person really trash? Or do I uh, have I lost touch with music? Have I lost touch? It makes you start questioning yourself, right? Doesn't it, doesn't it can it do that? Maybe not you, but I know, I, I, you know, when I see some of these guys, I'm like, man, some of these artists. That happened to me back. That happened to me some years ago, but I, I, I still don't say I haven't lost touch. Cause lost touch is when you, when you say lost touch, I think of someone who is just, they are just totally detached from reality, and you could tell it by the way that they walk, they talk, by you know everything. 
I'm not detached because I still know what real hip hop is. And I can identify the difference between real hip hop and those that are not. And that's not being out of touch. You know, um, out of touch is when you don't listen to it no more and you don't know who is who. We're not okay. in that boat. We're not in that boat. So, um, you know. Well, you know me, man. I like to have an intellectual conversation. And in order for our conversation, I think, to gather some steam, is it cool if I go ahead and give a breakdown on what industry plan actually is, what it actually means to, pro to provide some type of, you know, definition for, you know, the individuals that we're speaking about, right? Please, please so, do. Um, I have industry plan here as uh, it refers to an artist who is secretly backed and promoted by a major record label or industry insider okay while being presented as an independent or grassroots type of act right so there's a creation of an illusion of their organic success okay so we're talking about artists who are placed in front of the masses based on major labels wanting them to blow we're not talking about artists that are quote unquote grassroots and they start from the bottom you know they playing concerts at the ymca and then moving up to doing a club and then they moving up to doing you know maybe they get a record out on the on the radio by chance and people get a hold of it and it you know it get and it and it and explodes and they become you know overnight successes in that sense right it takes you know some years to kind of pull that off you know a year two three you know i don't know but it's not overnight excess in the literal sense of we never seen your ass before and now you are making millions and millions and billions of dollars or whatever just because right just because the industry is saying that your music is tight now the hard part about proving if somebody is an industry plan or not is being able to prove everything i just said happened because sometimes these industry plans come out and they actually good. They actually are good artists. But what, what do you get when you get an artist that gets planted into the industry, right? And they are trash. And I mean, like, it's like, where did you come from? Where did you get your skills from? Because <sighs> this is not going to pass the test of time. This is not going to last. This is bubblegum music, right? It's cookie cutter, meaning that within about, you know, within a few months, we're not going to care about that song anymore. Most of the music out there is like that right now. So I'm starting to wonder, is, is most of the industry just plants? Are they are they teaching us what we like or are we telling them what we like? And there's a difference. Man, that's a uh, that's a heavy one right there. I mean. Because I have as an artist myself, I have to pay attention to the audience. So to speak. In a sense, I have to pay attention to the audience. I, I can gauge the audience and what they like, what catches their attention, what will make them listen. You know, what can I add to my music that will make them listen? It's a tricky scientific type of method that I have to do, but I pay attention to this nonetheless. Now, there are several different ways you can go about this. 
you could fall in feet first and say, okay, well, I'm gonna just do whatever it is that they doing right now, whatever, whoever's popular right now, we could do this and we'll get, we'll be popular right along with the popular people. Or you can go the opposite route. You can be yourself in times where people are struggling to be themselves and within you holding your own identity you will stand out amongst all these other people who don't have an identity of their own and that's the method that i choose to use now everybody does not approach it the same unfortunately you have more that's, that's the damn show <laughs> yeah i mean Man, now I, they you have a lot of followers. They faking streams. They faking social media promotion. You know, paid is paid social media promotion, and you know, uh, manufactured viral trends. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, they, uh, you know, they boosting the the artist popularity artificially. You know what I'm saying? The artist right. backstory. And they image, you know what I mean? All of that's crafted. All of that's crafted to hide, you know, their industry connections and, you know, the fact that they're not organic, that they, that they didn't come from the people, that they were, you know, they, they made a plastic. They was created. You know what I'm saying? They didn't grow from the earth. You know what I'm saying? That shit ain't organic. You know what I'm saying? That's some McDonald's and shit. I agree. I, I agree 100%. Uh, even down to the um, right now, the the masses don't care about a classic album or a great body of work. They care about a good song. And the reason why I say that is because the average artist has to release 26 singles a year just to stay in the algorithm just to stay i guess maintain 26. some 26 and, and that's, like a lot, two, that's a lot that's like a double album that's two albums i was just gonna say that's two albums but the average but this is what they're doing they they microwaving this music and putting it out and like you say we're not gonna remember it in six months to a year but this is what they're doing and I'm I'm from the era of if your music is good, your music is good and all that other stuff don't matter. You know what I'm saying? What I talk, who what I have an opinion on, I don't care about that. You know, uh why should that be in the news? Why should all this stuff, all these other metrics that have nothing to do with the music be in the news just so that I can remain relevant? This is something that I had been I've been dealing with pretty much since the era when rap changed, I say between 2007 and 2010, when skills, lyricism, classic albums, all that got pushed to the back burner. And now it's about your personality. Now it's about your opinions on other people. Now it's about all these other metrics that have nothing to do with the quality of your music. And I found a, a grave issue with that because you know, if I have an opinion on something, okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But nah, that has nothing to do with the fact that when I get in front of that microphone, I'm gonna burn it up every time. That has nothing to do with that. And that I have an issue with that. Even today, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I I, I let my music speak and the music is good enough to stand up on its own and for me not to say a word because the music is that good but we're living in times where people don't care about a classic album they care about a good song something that sounds good when they drive in their car or something that sounds good when they're in the club drinking and that's the truth uh now you do have i i do want to be fair that and, and say that you have people who don't live that lifestyle or don't have that mindset and they actually do care about quality music, classic material, not just one song, a body of work. 
And I bring that up because I just released Double Jeopardy with Bella. Shout out to Bella. Uh, but I feel like because we're in times that people don't value classic material, quality music, it's kind of being overlooked. And that irritates me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it's not just me who has to suffer with this. It, it, it's I see that it's other artists, too, who may be uh, a little bit more known. Some of them might be signed to a major. It could be somebody like a Lupe Fiasco, who's an incredible lyricist. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, his work is overlooked because the masses is really not on Lupe Fiasco. Uh, how do you feel about that? Be it the overlook part, the over, overlooking of certain things. Well, unfortunately, man, unfortunately, you know, we probably have uh, missed out on some incredible artists over the years uh, who've been overlooked, so to speak. Um, like you said, uh, due to these, you know, um, cookie cutter processes and, you know, the fact that the industry is out here trying to, you know, just basically make money. I mean, every industry is supposed to make money. But the more and more, I, more and more I listen, you know, to these uh, 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 folks that are on the inside, like uh, Joe Buttons and, and things like that, you know, they, they discuss the fact that um, artists aren't even out here making money um, like they used to. Um, how the 360 deals are so out of control. I mean, they're even putting in your deal like clauses that say that you basically got to pay them for eternity. Like when you, I mean, when you put something in, in somebody's in somebody's contract that uses the word eternity or forever or in perpetuity of, man, them people saying that you're going to be slave to me forever. And a lot of people don't, they don't, you know, they don't really give a shit as long as they, you know, getting their money. Um, but, you know, they basically turn them into workers, into employees. And uh, a lot of people getting overlooked, man, because they're not willing to basically be fucked by the industry. You know what I mean? They're not willing to sell themselves cheap. You know, um, they want the bigger, they want a bigger piece of the pie. And with the invention of all of these different technologies, like uh, StreamYard that we're using right now, and, you know, you got all all of the internet, uh, um, uh, and you got all of these apps and things like that. A lot of artists, you know, in AI, I man, they can go out and do a lot of this stuff on their own if they have their own, you know, if they have the, have the right mindset to get some shit popping and to get and to make it happen. But to be honest, man, it's a lot of gatekeeping going on. So even if I got, even if I get, you know what I'm saying, um, some momentum going, you know, me trying to make it big and get to these big concert venues and trying to get major distribution and things like that, man, they cutting you off, at, they cutting your throat because, you know, the gatekeeping, you know, the big, the big, the big boys don't want you in the game. The big boys don't want little independent companies in the game. They want to you know, take over everything. It's written, and, and to be honest with you, the shit should be considered a monopoly. And they should go in and start breaking up a lot of these big companies, you know, when it comes to uh comes to the record industry, man. You know, but people like um like Russ, you know, artists like Russ, um, you know, I applaud them. Artists like yourself, I applaud you because y'all going the extra mile to create platforms for yourself. And said, you know, screw um, the majors. You know, we're gonna get this organic thing going because once the people love you and like you, it ain't, it ain't really ain't nothing that they can do about it. You know, but try to block. It. But when the people want it, man, they gotta put you out there because if they don't, then they don't make the money that they could have made. That's game right there, man. Uh, what uh, what what is Tuck listening to when he drive in his car? Uh. You know what I'm saying? What what you listening to these days, man? Man, I'll be honest, man. I don't even the 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 music is is so poor. I don't really listen to a lot of it anymore. 
Um, you know, I listen to uh, a little bit of everything, man. You know, I like uh, country music. You know, I like uh, I like a lot of the the old school stuff. You know, the big bands, the old school R and B. Um, that's a lot of the stuff I'm listening to now. Uh, some of the things that kind of get me excited, you know, I hear records like, you know, um, you know, is you, you know, like that, you know what I'm saying? With, uh, with future and, uh, uh and K dot, you know, stuff like that gets me excited again, man. You know, the, the beat and the energy and the, and the, and the lyrics that go along with that, man, it's it, that stuff like that excites me, man. I get, I get crunk. You know, when I hear stuff like that, um, I'm listening to, uh, shit. I popped in some, um, West Side Gun, uh, yesterday I was, I was jamming West Side Gun. I actually ran into him, uh, in Navy Federal the other day, man. And, uh, we chopped it up for a second. You know, he told me he had a new album that was coming out soon. Um, I ain't gonna say what day is supposed to be coming out because he told me I was the first person that he 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 uh he mentioned you know mentioned it to but I will tell y'all you know uh Westside does have a does have a, a new album dropping um here in a little bit man so look out for it but um you know that crazy sound he got um this uh reminiscent to the old uh New York sound that old East Coast sound um with the abstract beats and you know the the crazy lyrics you know even the doughboy lyrics man you know I, I i love it because there's some there's art to it see i'm cool i don't have a problem with you know trap lyrics i don't have i don't have a problem with any of that stuff i really don't because i used to be in the game so i don't i don't have a problem with people expressing their experiences my thing is is if you do it do it with some class do it with some artistry, you know, uh, uh, you know, do it with some pizzazz. You know what I'm saying? Don't just do, you know, some regular old bullshit off a of bullshit beat. You know what I mean? Like bring me, you know, give me an experience, man. I want an experience when I listen to it. And that's what I get from Westside because he'll hit you with some poetry. He'll cut the music out and just start rapping by itself. You know, it's just something different. I'm looking for something different, man. Looking for something different. And well, just, just so you know, uh, since we're talking about difference and naming artists uh, here lately, uh, I, I feel like it's been a resurgence of real hip hop music that has been coming out. Okay. I'm just gonna name a couple of projects and I don't know if you heard them or not, but if you haven't, you might need to check them out. Rhapsody, okay, has a, Rhapsody has a new album called Please Don't Cry. Okay. Uh, the cover is yellow uh, and, and it's just her face on it. Uh, no words or nothing, but great album because she's a she's a spitter. Um, Definitely a spitter. <laughs> then you got Common you got Common and Pete Rock. They got a single out but they finna drop an album together. You got Nas and DJ Premier who have I'm a, a big, single album. I'm a big uh, 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 fan of Common for sure. And P. Rock, yeah. his, his 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 flow is stupid. So his energy is stupid. I, I, I love all that. DJ Premier and Nas. Then you got the new Dog Pound that just came out. Nas has just been throwing up, man. He, I don't, he, he just sick right now. Every, Every time I turn around, he, he dropping another album, man. He doing it. That's, you know. I feel like he gonna, he probably going to get another five if DJ Premier produced this whole album. So I, I'm looking for nothing short of five mics as far as Nas is concerned. Now, uh, then there's, uh, okay, I mentioned Double Jeopardy. I'm going to mention Double Jeopardy again because it's a great album. Shout out to Bella. You know what I'm saying? Um, then you have um, Lupe coming out at the end of this month. Mm. A new album, a new album called Samurai. 
One of my favorite. And, and next month is the return of Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, Missionary, an album that will be. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be cold because I, I was like, wow, I was like, death row, aftermath, interscope. I said, wow. I said, whoo, you never thought you would probably see death row and interscope in the same sentence again, but nah. we are, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, <laughs> he just showed us something. I was like, hey, man, like, I ain't gonna lie right now, the West Coast. The West Coast right now, they are on one right now. I'm not lying. Like, they are firing. And and Dre is fire. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to uh, neglect to mention this. Dr. Dre is releasing the album with Marsha Ambrosia at the end of this month. It's called that Costa Slava. That should be stupid now, right there. And, and not to mention, his his golden boy, Eminem, another album. <laughs> and you know, whether we like it or not, it's finna sell. You know what I'm saying? So well, I ain't got no problem with it at all, man. You know, I probably got I probably became more of an Eminem fan on the back end of his career than in the beginning, to be honest with you. I never bought I never bought any of I never uh, 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 really bought or streamed, should I say, any of his albums until, um, I don't know if it was The Recovery or something like that. I can't remember the name of the album, but around that, was, that time, probably about five years ago, four or five years ago, you know, when that last, that, that album he dropped. And then he kind of started dropping a couple more after that. But yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm fucked. I fucks with Eminem. Yeah, I don't under I don't understand. I be on the internet sometimes, and I don't understand the hate towards him. And I don't know if it's because he's just been winning, or it's just you know. But everybody knows that you know if you're in hip hop, it ain't too many records that he's on where he don't crash the artist that he's on the records with. And we can go down the line. I mean, because he has got on records with. You know, I could say early on, uh, you probably didn't see it. But when he started featuring and he started getting on features, oh, man, he was pulling the rug from under people's feet. And I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, what can you say about that? Now, album-wise, uh, Big E, God bless, he bought that first album. And I didn't, I ain't gonna lie, when My Name Is came out, I didn't get it. I did not get it. But then I listened to the album because Big had it, and that's how I heard it. And um, and I was like, okay, you could hear this dude got skills, but it came off more as comedy on that first album. Mm-hmm. And then and then this is what how it happened. Those features that he started doing started making you look at him different. He jumped on Dre record, forgot about Dre. Everybody loved that. Then he did the record with Missy Elliott on her album, crashed it on a Timberland beat. And then he did another song. And I was like, okay, I think I'm going to go buy the next album. That next album was Marshall Mathers. By all accounts, a classic body of work. I bought that album. Let me throw in. Let me throw in another artist since I'm thinking about him. Uh, Boosie. Boosie, man. I don't know if y'all been paying attention to Boosie, man, but Boosie been dropping some shit, man. Boosie, Boosie's albums, the last few albums that he released have been fire, in my opinion. One of them definitely a classic. Um. But but Boosie is one, and I'm uh I'm seeing uh who is that uh uh uh, uh, uh hot boy wise who uh who <laughs> oh boy just uh just got out of, just got off lock who uh oh BG BG yeah BG yeah. I'd be I'd be interested in hearing you know some more from BG um listening to him uh kind of grow since he's gotten out see where his flow is going 
Um, well, you know, know what they're doing, right? What's they up? about they about to do a hot boy reunion tour. Mm. I mean, okay. because right now, to be honest with you, all that all the music from that era is popular now. So any of those acts go on the road, they're gonna sell out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know how I feel aside, people are gonna go buy those tickets. People are gonna wanna go see that. You know what I'm saying? So they getting that together because that's not only a come that's a come up for all of them. I mean, that's that's a I mean, they could get broke off like if it's done right. And they go through the proper channels and they negotiate what they supposed to negotiate. They all could walk away from that with millions. You know what I'm saying? Just from this yeah. one tour, just being a hot boy reunion tour. And I think that they should because they deserve that. I mean, especially BG and Turk because they serve time. You know what I'm saying? And, and this will be like, you know, uh, giving them their flowers or giving them what they were supposed to get within their careers. You know what I'm saying? Because they probably didn't get it, what they deserve. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm for that. Boosie, uh, musically, I haven't heard anything from Boosie, but I always respect Boosie because he always speak his mind. And uh, I, I love that about Boosie. I mean, he is, a stand-up individual when it comes to speaking his mind on anything you know what i'm saying and that's respectable to me well before yeah. we get up out of here do you have anything you want to say to anybody man just shout out to uh um, big money texas you know speaking of looked over artists been so many looked over artists over the years man shout out to all the artists in the golden triangle here, even in the Houston area, that ain't getting the 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 clout and the respect that they should be getting. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to new artists like Mexican OT. You know what I'm saying? Who uh, should get uh, 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 more praise uh, as a young artist coming out of Texas? Shout out to uh, 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 to your show and everything that you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Sarah in the background making everything. Uh, happen and uh, one man records. Shout out to Chidi. Shout out to uh, Alive Marie. You know what I'm saying? As Lovers you of shout lyrics. Out, shout out. What's that? Lovers of lyrics. Playmaker. Uh, playmaker. Playmaker. Yellow. Shout out, no. man. One of yeah. one of the over one of the overlooked greats. You know. Shout out to Big Body. You know what I'm saying? Dre. Yeah. One of the best yep. artists out of out of the city, period. You know, mm -hmm. shout out to Porter. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Porter. You know, that boy is crazy with the lyrics too, man. He could just go on and on and on, man. You know. Already, man. 